Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue taking a look at the server admin utility and we're going to talk specifically today about the NetBoot service that's included with Lion Server. Now NetBoot allows you to basically create an image uh, of your either of a computer or of your install media and allows you to make that available then to all of the different computers on your network. And as we'll see in a minute, there are uh, different ways you can use this utility to basically have a way to install software on your computers without having to have the install media to make it happen. So it's really a neat service. So to get started, you want to go to the server admin application that we've talked about in the other screencasts, which you can get off of Apple's site. You want to go in here to the settings area and then on the services tab here you want to look for NetBoot which is right here. You want to click that to enable it. Once you enable it you want to click save so that basically the server will then go and configure the service and pretty soon once it's configured we'll see it on this side. You can see we've got a general tab here where you can enable NetBoot on at least one port uh, if you want to to be able to export it. You can select where you want to put the images and client data on which of your uh, hard drives you want to make that happen, whether you want it to be the images or the client data. There's an images tab where any image that we create will be here and I'll show you what happens when we populate that once we put one together. You've got some filtering uh, information here if you wanted to do some filtering we won't touch that too much and then you've got logging where you can actually log errors and things like that that actually happen with the NetBoot service. So as you can see right now, as you know, we're not live because we don't have the green area there, so we haven't done anything to make this live. Uh, but these are some of the basic settings here in the settings area. Let me give you a tour of these other areas up here on this tab, and then what I'll do is uh, show you the process of actually creating your own install media and show that computers can actually boot into that install media and have Lion reinstalled on their, com on their computers without you having to have a USB stick or something else to make those installs happen. So if you look here on the overview, it basically tells you whether the service is stopped or running. It tells you about anything about any images or related services. And you can see here we have nothing enabled because we haven't put anything on there. You'll notice too that it works for legacy uh, type of software systems too. Uh, OS 9, uh, 10, 10 diskless, and then regular 10 here. And, and these, uh, all of these have to do with things like whether it is an Intel chip or a PowerPC chip. Those various things are on there as well. And I'll show you how that looks. You've got your log here. Here's your system log as things happen with NetBoot. You can see any connections here. If anybody is connected to your NetBoot, again, uh, as I'll show you in a minute, you can set this up in such a way that people can just boot from their computer off your server and run a generic uh, copy of the operating system and then when they sign off then all of their information is gone and so when people are connected that way you'll see it on here and you'll see the status and where they're at and then here you can also see the various clients and things that uh, that have that information running and who's logged in at any time in terms of your computers so that gives you a basic tour of that now for us to set this up, the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure that we've got a working copy of Lion. And so what you want to do is go to uh, the App Store, and if you've already purchased Lion, which I'm assuming you are if you're watching this screencast, you'll notice that down in your list here, you can see I've got Lion, I have the ability to download the installed media from the App Store. So what I'm going to do is just click download on here for a second, and I'm going to let this start to download the installed media. You've got to log in and then it's going to start the process of actually downloading that information and putting it on my computer. Now, it's going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to let that download, and then once it's done, I'll come back and show you how to get started in setting up your own uh, install media so that if you need to do that, you can make that happen. Okay, once I've, in, once I've downloaded Lion from the App Store, it launches the uh, disk image that allows me to install, uh, install Lion, and this is what you normally get when that happens. So we've got our disk image there and we're ready to do the install. Now, to get started, one of the things we need to do is to actually create uh, the disk image. And so what I'm going to do is pull up what's called the System Image Utility. And now the System Image Utility is, uh, is found on your system. You just have to do a search for it in your Applications folder uh, under your Utilities. And what it does is it allows you to create a network disk image.
Now you can see that right here under sources I've got the uh, install uh, information there because it knows that that disk image is mounted and it gives me three options uh, to work with here. It gives me a net boot image which allows me to uh, boot the boot a Mac off of an image that's sitting on my server and this is usually used in school so that kids can boot off of an image on the computer and then when they sign off all of their personal data gets wiped off and the next person can boot off that disk image as well. For home we're probably not going to use that too much. Then we have a net install image which allows you to um, install OS OS 10 from your server as opposed to having to have a USB stick or figuring out a way to download things from the Mac App Store. And that's very helpful, especially now that we're not getting our install stuff on disks anymore. So this is what we're going to set up today. And then you have a net restore image, which allows you to uh, create a particular disk image with all of your settings the way you want it and everything for a Mac. And then you can then restore that image to a computer from your server. And again, not something that you're going to necessarily use when you only have a few Macs, but something you might use when you have a lot. So before I go showing you how to install this disk image, what I want to show you is that you have the ability uh, to customize how your install goes. And so I want to show you what that looks like, and then we're going to do a non-customized install of our disk image. So let me just click the Customize button here. I'm going to agree to the terms. And then it's going to bring up a screen that looks like this. And you can see it has me creating the image, uh, the type of image I want to create, uh, where I want to save it to in terms of a folder, um, all this information here on what I want to call it. And then on this left hand side here with this automator library I have the ability to customize various aspects of the install. And so there are a whole bunch of different ones that you can use with filters and things. But for instance, if I wanted to add the ability to partition the disk so that if someone was going to install OS 10, I wanted uh, first to have their disk uh, partitioned, set up the way it is, wiped and erased, and then have the install happen. Well, I could customize that right here and add that action. And all I need to do is just drag this action, partition disk, over here underneath. And you can see that now it shows up. And I can put, it looks just like disk utility. I can put up how many partitions I want the drive to be partitioned to. I can set up the volumes. I can name it. I can say how I want it formatted. All of that information. And uh, once that's set up, then I've got a customized uh, image that would happen. So first it would uh, basically partition the disk and then it would install. And I believe you can move these things around in order too. So like if I wanted to first have it partition the disk before it installed, then it would basically first partition, then it would create the image. So it's a little, uh, it's an ability to customize your install and all of that information is built in over here. Uh, for today though, I'm just going to go now and I want to show you how to actually do the install just to, to show you what a straight install looks like. Okay, so now we're going to look at creating a net install image. But before we do that, there's a couple of things that we need to do in the server admin app. So let's pull up the server admin app for a second. You want to go to settings in general. Because we've got to select where we want to put this image if we're going to set it up and where we're going to put the client data and which port uh, we're going to have that information available on. So I'm going to put it on my main uh, server hard drive, both the image and client data. And I'm just going to make uh, both of my Ethernet ports available. Uh, just pick your main Ethernet port. That probably is fine. You can also pick how many connections you want for them to boot off of. Uh, I just leave it at the default of 50. And then you can just save it. And uh, then the system has gone to, uh, to save that information so that that is available for you. And then that basically tells us when we go to create the image, where to put the image and where to put the client data. And it's going to create the folder and that information that we need so we know where to store our image. So let's now let's go back to the uh, system image utility because we've got to have an image before we can start the service. So now we're going to do the net install image that we talked about. We'll click continue. I'm going to leave everything the same. You can name it however you want. I'm going to leave that the same. If you want to have it served up on more than one server, you can do that as well. Again, this is for home users, so I'm assuming you only have one. We're going to click Create here. It's going to ask if we agree with the license and all of that, which we're going to do. And then it's going to ask us where we want to install it, and it takes us immediately into a shared folder here that it created called Netboot. So that little Netboot folder down there wasn't there until we uh, chose where we wanted to save this information. And you want to save it in this Netboot SP0 folder, not the client's one, but this one. You want to save it right in there. And so we're going to click Save. And so it's going to go now creating the disk image. It's going to ask for your uh, user credentials to make sure that you log in and that you want to do it. And now it's going to go about starting to create the disk image. 
it's going to copy the source volume, it's going to create the NetBoot system, and then it's going to finish up. And so we're going to, uh, to watch while that happens, and I'll probably just let it go through everything, and when it's done, I'll come back, and we'll go to the next step of seeing how this worked and getting it set up. Okay, now you can see that uh, the net install is done. It's created the disk image, the volume. It's put it in the right place, so everything's ready to go. It's finished up. I can just click Done, and everything's done, and it takes me back here. So now what we need to do is test to see if this worked out okay. So what we're going to do is go back to our uh, server admin screen where we've got NetBoot and we need to go find our images and you can see right here, here's the image that we just created. And it's got, uh, we, can, we can make sure this image is the def default, we can enable it so that that way it is available for people to boot off of. You'll notice too that you have the ability to choose the architecture if this was a multiple architecture app. So if you were back in uh, let's say uh, Leopard, you made a Leopard one or you made even Snow Leopard, there's a difference between PowerPC support and not. And so you could tell whether it was PowerPC or Intel. And then you've got the protocol, whether it's over NFS or HTTP. So we're just going to leave it over, the, over an NFS protocol. And you can see it tells us where it's stored and all that information. Everything's right Right there. So I'm going to save this now so that that information is saved and ready to go. And then we're going to start the NetBoot service. And you can see it is started now. NetBoot shows green. Everything looks ready to go. If we go back to our overview, we've got this ready to go. Um, and it looks like our net install image is right there over NFS and it's ready to go for us to connect to. So let me show you uh, for a second what it looks like to connect to that by going to a client machine so that you can see that it's available for your clients to boot into. Okay, now I'm on my other computer. I'm doing a screen share and I've pulled up system preferences and if the net install worked right, I should see it as an option for my startup disk so that I can start from it. And as you can see, yes, it's right here. I have the ability now to start up from this particular net install uh, here from the server. You can see it's got my server address on there and shows that it's ready to go. If I just click on this and click restart, it will boot right into the Lion install uh, media and would allow me to then reinstall install the operating system. So that's all I have for this week. That gives you a good idea on how net install works. Like I said, there's also the ability to net boot and everything off the server, but for home users, this is probably where you get the most use out of it. And then you don't have to worry about having the media around. You automatically have the ability to install uh, OS 10 right from your server to your client machines. So like I said, that's all I have for this week. Uh, I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.